Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to talk about ingesting data into a lake house using notebooks. We're going to talk about querying multiple lake houses using a single notebook, customizing a notebook's environment, installing libraries, creating a virtual table, and more. Let's get started. In Microsoft Fabric, Notebook is part of the data engineering experience. So let's get started by creating a new notebook. Now, as, you, uh, as the notebook is created, you see that it supports multiple languages, including PySpark, Spark Scala, Spark SQL, and Spark R. And by default, the notebook runs in the workspace's default environment. And we'll talk about in the next few minutes how to customize an environment. Now, a notebook is associated with a lake house. By default, uh, there has to be a default lake house. Let's go get uh, create one. I'm going to create a new lake house and uh, give it a name and uh, hit create. And within a few seconds, a new lake house is created and it, it gets associated with this particular notebook. The next thing I want to do is query an Azure SQL database uh, and in the, ingest the data from a table in that database into my lake house. Now, this is a standard boilerplate um, uh, code. It's a uh, PySparks code, uh, code which uh, where we configure the connection parameters from the server name to the credentials and the database name and uh, read the data into a data frame and write it into a table. I've gone ahead and uh, executed the uh, uh, PySpark code. And uh, now you notice that there is a table in my lake house called weather data. And if I run a simple uh, PySpark code to see uh, the count of the number of rows, uh, I see that there are close to 8 million rows in this table. Okay, that's a simple PySpark code. Now, like I mentioned, a notebook can be associated with um, a lake house, but not just one lake house. We could have multiple lake houses. So let's say I want to add a new lake house. I have some existing lake houses and I'm going to add one more lake house to this. Now, if you notice here, I have two lake houses associated with this notebook and by and the lake house LH0, uh, LH1 is my default lake house. So every notebook has a default lake house. So with the default lake house, I do not need to uh, provide the full qualification. I can um, just query the table like this. But if I need to query the uh, any other la uh, lake house, I need to fully qualify it. Now, as you can see in my lake house too, I have a table called stations. And let's see if I can now create a join between uh, the table that is in my uh, lake house one, which is weather data and uh, the one which is in my lake house two and see if I can write a SQL statement. Let me create a new cell block here and change this to a uh, Spark SQL code and it adds this on top. Now, let me paste my piece of code and execute this. Now notice here, what I'm doing is uh, LH1 has the table weather data, LH2 has a uh, table stations and I'm joining that using station ID and here's my uh, my output so you can have tables from different lake houses query them from a single uh, notebook and these lake houses could potentially be in different workspaces as well as long as you fully qualify them you can uh, query across now all these uh, uh, tables are in um, in the lake house and basically they have a file path associated with it so if I create a new code cell block and then I can actually copy the path of this particular table and query that using uh, PySpark. Let's give it a try. So I copied uh, the path. Let me paste it here and let me create a variable and put in the rest of the code. And there you go. So I've created a variable, assigned the path to it. So the path is basically this is my uh, workspace name. This is my lake house name and my table name. And uh, I'm just picking the uh, showing the first 10 rows. Uh, so you have different options to actually query the uh, lake house tables. We looked at uh, using uh, PySpark 
uh, we looked at using um, Spark SQL, and then uh, we could use PySpark uh, with just by using the path of the file. All right. So the next thing, how do I uh, use libraries? If I if I want to use some libraries which are not available um, within my environment, how do I do that? We have two options. One is we can uh, use inline libraries, and here's how you would do that. And uh, just creating a new cell block, and this is like this is a standard way you would go about doing it. You would install a new um, library with uh, with pip install. That's option one. And then option two is we could create an uh, environment, custom environment for this workspace, and use that environment to execute this notebook. So to do that, we would go to uh, go go to the workspace settings. And within workspace settings, I would go into Spark settings. And here I need to go into environment. I need to set the default environment to on. And here, once I click on the drop down, I have an option to create a new environment. Let's say I create a demo environment. And within here, I have the option to add any of my um, custom libraries I can add. Uh, from different uh, sources. Once I've selected my public libraries, I could also add custom libraries if I choose to. I could configure uh, the compute and Spark properties as well. And once that's done, um, I need to save and publish this. Once that's done, I can go back to my notebook. And when I select the environment dropdown, I can see the newly created environment. I can select this and run the notebook within this new environment. And one last thing I would like to talk about is creating virtual tables. Now, here uh, is a simple script uh, you could use to create a virtual table. Now, what I'm doing is I'm connecting to a MySQL uh, database. And this is uh, standard options where I could provide the uh, server information, the database table, and credentials. And then I can create a virtual table. I'm calling this virtual user. And you see, once I execute this, I've already gone ahead and created it. And when I created it, it creates a virtual table in my lake house. What that means is there's no actual data in this table, but it is uh, got the, all the metadata. So I can query my MySQL using this virtual table. And uh, you might find some scenarios where this might be useful. And the easy way to distinguish between a virtual table and a delta table is on a delta table, you'll see a delta sign, whereas virtual table is it doesn't have any of that. So um, hope that helps. And uh, this is I, th I thought some of th these are some of the things that we have learned in our last few months of using notebooks with Fabric. I uh, hope this is helpful. And if you've got any questions, feel free to contact us at www.obvience.com.